afternoon. Recently, I chatted with a relative of one of our church members. And even though he told me that he prays three times a day, he said, I'm not very religious. And the reason is because he has a problem with churches. Churches have all that money, and there's so much good that they could be doing with it. Now, when he said that, I'll confess a part of me wanted to tell him about all the ways that our church is reaching out to those in need. But wisely, I bit my tongue, because I didn't want to get into a pointless debate with him over it. The reality, though, is his assessment of churches is a reminder for all of us about what church is about. The purpose for a church is not to maintain our institution. We're not supposed to focus all of our energy and finances on the church itself. The church exists to make a difference in the world. And he's right. If churches are not using their resources to help people in need, then something's wrong. Yes, the church is called to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who haven't heard it, so they may put their faith in him and be saved. But addressing the needs of our world is also part of our mission and purpose as a church. I've heard it described as the two wings of an airplane, both evangelism and caring for those in need. The church needs both. Our partner church in Ghana and West Africa has the motto, the whole gospel for the whole person in the whole world. Caring for those in need has always been a hallmark of the church. In the early days of the church, back in the Roman Empire, the government and private organizations did not do anything to help the poor and the sick and the needy. If you were in need, you either relied on your family or you went begging in the street. But what set the church apart and what got the early church noticed by everyone else was how they cared for the poor and the sick. And the statistics are staggering to see how much money they used to care for the poor and the sick. The pagan emperor Julian, who definitely opposed Christians, was able to recognize the good that the Christians did. Even though he didn't like the Christians, he said, the impious Christians support not only their own poor, but ours as well. All men see that our people lack aid from us. The church invented the concept of the hospital. The whole idea of having a place where sick people can go to be taken care of is something the church invented. There was a plague roughly 100 years after the church began, and 5 million people across the Roman Empire died. Everyone else was afraid to catch the disease, so they left their loved ones alone to die. Not the Christians. The Christians cared for the sick, their own sick, and those who weren't Christians who were sick. And they did so regardless of the risk that they took for themselves by doing so. The New Testament is littered with passages calling on believers to care for those in need. Romans 12:13. Share with God's people who are in need. Galatians 2.10, remember the poor. Ephesians 4.28 says that the reason for us to work is so that we have something to share with those in need. Jesus himself told people to sell what they have and give it to the poor. And he held up that Samaritan who selflessly took care of the man who had been beaten up by robbers as an example for us. So why should we, as a church, and why should we, as individual Christians, help the poor and the sick and those in need? Well, first of all, we can share our resources because they really aren't ours. What we have doesn't belong to us, whether it's the money that we have or the time and energy that we can spend. It all belongs to God and should be used for his service. And second, our love for God is directly connected to our love for our neighbors. You cannot have one without the other. 1 John chapter 3 tells us that if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? 
And James chapter 2 tells us that it is pointless to claim that you have faith in God if you do nothing to help those who are hungry or in need. Yeah, it's popular these days for people to trash the church. They, like the person I've talked with recently, tells us that we're too focused on maintaining our institutions. There's plenty of faults in the church, both now and faults in the past that you could talk about. But the way to answer people like the fellow I spoke with is not to argue with them, not to try to convince them that maybe their impression of the church is wrong. The way to answer them is to act, to be faithful not only to our heritage as a church, but faithful to our Lord and to his command to care for those who are in need. We should always be seeking new and different ways that we can be making a positive difference in the world. Does the church have a lot that we can be using to help people in need? We sure do. So instead of telling people what we're already doing, let's show them by doing even more. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, we live in a world in which there is so much need. But we live in a world where there are so many resources, so many opportunities. Each situation where there is a need or a problem is an opportunity for us to demonstrate our love and your love. So help us as a church quit thinking about ourselves and always be focused on what we can be doing to help those in need. And may we do all of this to the glory of the one who gave his all for a world that rejected him our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.